Hi guys! For today's video, I'm going to be doing something that I've been dreaming of doing for kind of a while. Number one, first and foremost, I feel like I need a little bit of a break this week. I just have been really overworking myself here. I went back to work, I have my newborn baby, posting on YouTube every week for the first three months of his life, and I just, I need a little bit of a break here and there. So that's first and foremost. But the secondary thing is, I've been doing my YouTube channel for four years now, and I have tons of series of videos. like all different types of videos. I've got create this book, I've got draw your journal, I've got squishy makeovers, figurine makeovers, Dollar Tree DIYs, sewing videos, you name it, and I probably have a playlist for it. But the thing about playlists is you have to watch every individual video. You gotta watch all the intros, all the outros, and it's like, let's just get to the point. So what I've wanted to do is eventually create one long video that includes every single thing that I've created. So that is what I've decided to do today. It's a little bit of a weird idea, a little bit crazy. You might not be interested in watching long format content in this way. It's like a rerun, you kind of keep it in the background. It's a long video. This one's gonna be not as long as some of the other ones. If I do a squishy makeover one, it's gonna be crazy, it might be hours long. If watching long format content in this way is not for you, I totally get that, totally understand, and come back next week, we'll have something new. But I'm very excited for this because I feel like it's gonna be really fun to have like everything I've ever created in one video. So for today's video, we're doing every stuffed animal I've ever created in 2023. Up first, we have the teddy bear. We're using my sewing machine. When I was in the Dollar Tree quite a while ago, I happened upon the fabric section. They have like a little area with different crafter square fabrics. These are pretty small pieces of fabric that are very rough in texture and quite thin. But I like to sew and I thought it would be interesting for me to try to create my own plushie. I used to take sewing lessons and I used to sew my own clothes, so I'm fairly well versed in sewing clothes. I'm not like an expert or anything, but I know how to at least sew some things. However, I certainly have absolutely no experience sewing stuffed animals, and I definitely needed a template to follow. So I surfed the internet for the simplest teddy bear template. If you don't know what a sewing template is, it's basically like a visual instructions for how to sew the thing you're trying to sew. So here we have a head, a foot, a foot pad, an arm, a leg, a body. It shows you how to cut it out with the fabric and where to leave the openings when you start sewing things together. Once I've cut my templates out on paper, it's time to choose my fabric color. I decided to go with this light pink fabric color. It's already opened, but also because I actually only had one sewing thread on hand. Typically people will get an exact match for their fabric with their thread, but I decided I was going to intentionally show the hot pink anyway, so I thought this was good. I spaced out my paper templates, took out my safety pins, and pinned the templates in place. The reason I'm pinning the templates in place is because I'm going to be cutting the fabric out in those shapes and I don't want the paper moving all around and messing up what I'm cutting. And now we're ready to cut the fabric out in those shapes. You'll notice on each of the template pieces it says a count on them. For example, this one says arm cut two pairs. This one is layered with two, so that's one pair, and now we need to cut out a second pair. Since there's two pairs of two, there will be four pieces of arm fabric. For the body, it only says cut one pair, which means there will only be two pieces of body fabric. The same goes for the bear's head, you cut one pair, and there's several different instructions for different pieces of the body. After I cut the pink pieces, I moved on to the purple fabric. So the bear is going to be composed of both pink pieces and some purple pieces. The purple pieces will be more of the accent colors, like the foot pads, the paw pads, the inner ear, and the head gusset. I don't know if I'm saying that word right, but apparently it's a gusset. So here are all of the bear pieces before anything has been sewed, but we have cut everything out. And now it's time to take out our sewing machine and start sewing things together. I'm starting off with the head to this teddy bear, which includes the gusset. What? You'll notice it says A, 
and B on the head, as well as A and B on the head gusset. I'm going to sew from point A to point B. So on the fabric, that would be from point A to point B and point A to point B. That'll create a 3D head. Let's bring out our sewing machine and start off real simple doing that. We're gonna sew again from point A to point B, i.e. the tip of the nose to the back of the head. You do one side at first, so that's this side. I did only the pink to the purple. And now we're gonna sew the other side of the purple gusset to the other side of the head. And this will hopefully create the beginnings of a three-dimensional teddy bear head, hopefully. Okay, so here we have the very small amount we've done so far. If you inside it out, we have the beginnings of a skull for a teddy bear. And now we're gonna sew this side of the head and the other side of the head. This is basically like sewing the back of the head to the base of the neck and the tip of the nose to the front of the neck. I'm insiding this out. The only thing that I haven't sewn is straight across the neck. And that's because I'm going to be filling it with this thing called polyfill. It's basically like stuffing. It's teddy bear stuffing. You can use this to stuff pillows. You can use it to stuff your own plushies. It's basically like this fluff stuff. It's like a cloud. And I'm using it to stuff the head of the teddy bear. I needed way more of this stuffing than anticipated, but that's okay. Once it was totally stuffed, I kind of like folded over the neck piece and then tried to sew it as minimally as possible. Sewing the head closed like this is not technically correct in my opinion, but I'll get into that more. We have the two ear pairs and we're gonna sew just around the semicircle, but leave the bottom part of the ear open. That is because once I'm done sewing these, I want the bottom part to be open so I can inside it out and fill it with stuffing. These were so tiny, it was quite a struggle to actually inside them out, but once I got it, I was able to fill it with the stuffing. The fluff, fluffing, fluffing, I like that. The instructions again gave me the same method of closing the ears where you actually see the seam line. I prefer things to be more seamless than that but oh well. So I have the front and the back for the body pair. I'm sewing around the semicircle and leaving the neck part open. That lever I'm pulling right there, that makes the stitch go backwards and that'll actually help hold the stitch in place better. I inside it out the body and then stuffed it with so much stuffing, oh my gosh. This stuffing, you, you think that you need so little and then you start stuffing things and it's like, wow, where's it all going? The case of the disappearing fluff. It just disappears into thin air, poof. Okay, so we've started the head, the ears and the body. Now we need some arms. And we're just gonna sew these little kidney beans together and leave a small opening for the stuffing. It turns out when I said leave a small opening, I left a very small opening. I could only fit my pinky finger into these. So actually stuffing this with the fluff was the hardest part because I had to use only my pinky finger. My life is impossibly hard. I can't say this was entirely my fault though because I was only following the instructions and they literally said to leave this size opening. All right, we've done some arms and now we need some legs. We've got two pairs of these bad boys and this looks like a deceivingly simple process. Really only you have to sew the left side and the right side of these legs together. But then you have to have this foot pad on the bottom of the foot. So there's an opening on the bottom part of the foot right there and you have to stick that foot pad into the opening and sew around the oval. Sewing around the oval is easily the hardest part of this whole process because it's such a tiny area and it's very easy to sew over a different piece of fabric and sew the whole leg together. But when you inside it out, it's the most rewarding because now we have a leg with a cute little purple foot pad. I'm filling this with fluff and stuffing or whatever you want to call it until it's nice and firm. Not too firm, but you know, a nice amount of fluff in it so that we feel. Okay, so here we have most of the base pieces for the teddy bear, except the arm paw pads. For this, I decided I'm going to sew this by hand. And that is because I want this teddy bear to look like it was a hand sewn teddy bear. And what I mean by that is I want to be able to see these hot pink stitches on the teddy bear in certain places. For example, on the arm, there's a paw pad and I want to be able to see the pink stitching that goes around the outside of this purple paw pad. Part of the reason I decided to do this is because it's kind of inevitable with this type of teddy bear that you're going to see the stitching. And that's mostly because of my fabric choice. 
if I had used a teddy bear fabric that was actually furry, they literally sell fabric that looks like teddy bear fur. You wouldn't have this problem because it, I could make all the stitches in the world and you wouldn't really see them because you would just see the fur. But with this type of fabric, you're really gonna see the stitches no matter what you do. So I thought it would be more fun to make the stitches part of the aesthetic and really embrace it. The template I have actually didn't come with any type of ear pad. I don't know what that's actually called, but you know, the inner part of the ear when it has a different color, I thought it'd be cute. You know what? Let's give it an ear pad, whatever that's called, inner ear color. Whenever I end my stitches that are done by hand, I create my knot on the sewing needle and then pull it out. That allows you to create the knot as close to the end as possible. Okay, that's one ear and now we have a second ear. And now it's time to give our teddy bear a face. I did kind of like a semi-circle at first and then tried to fill it in and make a full circle. This took a little bit of time, probably longer than it would have if I used some embroidery thread, but I got a circle shape and I did that same thing to the other side of the face. For the nose, I created a triangle on the tip of the face and tried to make it look like a teddy bear nose as best as possible. This is the only part where I thought, you know what, I really should have used some embroidery thread. Embroidery thread is just thicker and it probably would have been a lot quicker, especially for the nose if I had used that. I gave this teddy bear a nice cute little smile as well as some eyebrows. I'm honestly not the best at embroidery skills, but I tried my best to create a semi-circle for the eyebrows and I think I did an okay job. Okay, now we finally have all of the pieces for our teddy bear and it's finally time to sew it all together. And this actually took quite a while to sew all of the limbs on because I had to do two layers to make sure everything was nice and secure. You'll notice on the back parts of the limb, you end up seeing the seam. In the actual instructions for this template, this was how they told you to sew the limbs on. And that is because I think they were expecting me to use a fabric that would naturally cover it. After attaching the legs to the body, I moved on to the arms. The process was similar to the process of sewing the legs, except they're kind of floating, so it was a little bit more hard to keep them in place. The ears were particularly difficult because it's kind of just like floating in the middle of the head and you have to kind of make sure you're putting it in the right spot. But I did get the ears on and now we have to attach the head to the neck. So I'm threading it through and put a bunch of stitches to make sure that head was nice and secure. And here we have the results of my very first attempt at sewing a plushie using my sewing machine. I feel like the head looks a little bit thin for a teddy bear and it kind of looks more like a mouse, I will say that. I do appreciate the aesthetic of showing the seams, but in the future, I would like to actually go to a craft store and buy some fabric that has some fur and see what kind of plushie I can make with that. Moving on to our next stuffed animal, I'm going to be creating a cat. I am going to be sewing my own plushies again, except this time I have decided to very precisely and mathematically draw out my own pattern. If you don't know what a sewing pattern is, it's a bunch of drawings that basically explain to you how you're going to sew the thing you're trying to sew. An instructional roadmap of sorts. I have never created my own sewing pattern for a stuffed animal, but I do have some experience with sewing my own clothes. So I'm hoping I can apply that knowledge to this experience. Last week, I created my first ever plushie on my channel, my first official plushie. It was a bear. To create my bear, I used a somewhat complicated pattern. I thought it was simple, but according to all of your comments, apparently it was a pretty complex sewing pattern. And after that experience, I felt like I was ready to attempt to draw my own pattern. As I'm sure you can guess, I did make some mistakes, but that's okay. I like to learn by doing, and I also hate following other people's instructions. So this works perfectly for me. We're doing it ourselves. I picked out a bunch of furry fabrics at Joann's. They happened to be closing the particular one I went to and all of the stuff was 30% off. So naturally I bought everything I laid eyes on. It's so soft. Once all my cats 
Cat's body pieces were cut out, I took out my pins. As I'm sure you noticed in my last video, I actually despise pins. They hurt me a lot. But in this video, I had to use the pins because the fabric I used was very stretchy and it would just move when you were trying to cut things out. Pins are my mortal enemy. I've stabbed myself at least four times during this video and made myself bleed once, but who's counting? To start off our cat, we're starting with our head and our head gusset. I'm doing the same thing I actually did for the bear. I'm sewing from the tip of the nose to the back of the skull and pinning those in place. Next, I'm preparing my sewing machine. This is a bobbin. I'm threading the bobbin. Underneath my sewing machine, I discovered that everything is very dusty. Wow cobwebs down there. I feel like one of you probably has a suggestion for cleaning this. Once our sewing machine is all threaded and ready to go, I'm sewing the head to the head gusset. The right side of the head is sewn, and I'm flipping that outside in, inside out. Someone said that they've never heard of the term insiding something out, which I don't know if that's just my mom saying something wrong and then me in turn also saying it wrong. Anyway, the head is prepared kind of like the skull part, but now we need to sew down the snout and across the neck, leaving a little opening so we can still inside it out. And now it's time to take out our fluffing. This is not actually called fluffing. It's actually called stuffing. No, fluff, no, polyfill. You see, calling it polyfill is just not as fun. I'm gonna be calling it fluffing from now on and no one can stop me. When I was at Joanne's, I went to the stuffed animal section. Believe it or not, they had that. And there was this packet of blue eyes. And I thought, you know what? This is gonna go perfectly with my blue cat. That transparent clear-ish backing is the eye socket. I don't know if that's technically what it's called, but I'm calling it the eye socket. I stuffed both of the eye sockets into the right positions and left them there there for a later point. I then took out my sewing thread. This is the same thread that I have on my sewing machine and I threaded it through a regular sewing needle. I'm going to be using this actually on the snout of this cat. I wanted the snout to be a little bit more pronounced. So the stitches are meant to hold down that part of the fabric and make the nose stick out a bit more. That's done and it's time for our second piece of fabric. This fabric I am obsessed with. It literally looks like my dream paint pour results. You'll notice I cut out both ears and a body. I didn't end up making the fabric for the body a paint pour, so just ignore that. I did, however, make the inside of the cat's ears paint pour colored. I did this by making the back side of the ears the blue color and the inside of the ears the paint pour fabric color. I sewed along the triangle of the ears and left a small opening so that I could flip the fabric inside out. Once the triangle ears were flipped inside out, I sewed that small opening closed by hand. Once the opening to the ear was closed, I wanted to attach it to the cat's head. I made sure that the beginning and the end stitches were really secure by knotting them a couple of times. And when I sewed the actual ear, I made sure that the ear was kind of curved inward a little bit because cat's ears aren't really exactly straight across. They're a little bit curved and that helped create an inner ear. This was much easier than the bear's sewing process because you can notice that even though I'm sewing these stitches on the outside, you don't really see them because the thread matches and it kind of blends into the fur. It just goes to show you that fabric choice makes a huge difference when you're sewing stuff like this. Because there were no noses in Joann's, not even at the stuffed animal section, I had to go on Amazon and buy a huge pack for way less money of all of these different eyes and noses. I decided to use the light pink nose for this cat. I put the backing into the tip of the nose and then took out my cricket pointy thing. I don't even remember what this is supposed to be used for. My mom loves cricket and she got me one and I don't use it that often. I really, I really should. The nose was shockingly hard to snap into place and that's probably why it was so cheap on Amazon. It did have a lot of complaints, but you know. I used the pointy cricket thing to also make some holes in the fabric by the eyes and snap the eyeballs into the socket. I will say the one from Joann's was much easier to snap into place. That's called quality. Then again, it might be better if it was harder to snap into place because it's harder for it to come off and less likely for an infant to choke on it. I will not be giving this stuffed animal to any babies, so probably not relevant. Okay, we're threading another thread. This is a black thread and I'm using this to create a mouth on the face of this cat. I want the cat to just have, you know, a simple mouth, just two lines, nothing too crazy. I'm loving this so far. The cat is looking so cute and pouty, a little bit dismayed. I feel like it's fitting because most cats really do not look 
happy a lot of the time. So, I mean, it works. I'm also making some eyebrows that are slightly downturned to make the cat look a little bit upset. Eyebrows are done and I'm threading the thread back through to the opening of the neck, knotting it and cutting it off. After that, I'm adjusting the stuffing inside the head to make sure it's exactly the way I want it before I start sewing up and totally closing off the head neck area. That's done, and we have a decapitated cat. A very cute decapitated cat, and it's time to do the body. I'm very mathematically remeasuring what I did wrong because I realized I didn't leave enough room for the neck. Essentially, I made the gusset, the body gusset, way too short, and I didn't go all the way up the neck. If that doesn't make sense to you, it's okay. Just know I made a terrible mistake and I had to redo a lot of stuff. And ta-da! Here is our new roadmap. I'm cutting out a new body gusset, and here are the new legs, as well as the new blue body, no longer a paint-poor body because I changed my mind. The first thing we're gonna do is sew all four of the paint-poor legs to the paint-poor gusset. I'm also just checking that the body lines up with the gusset. The idea here is that the cat will have a blue body, but underneath the cat, on the belly and underneath the legs, there will be a paint pour rainbow kind of color going on. So I'm sewing the legs to the gusset, and after I've done that, it looks like this. Now that the very colorful underbody part is done, we can do the outside. I'm gonna start with just the right side of the body, the blue part, and sew that around the feet and the under stomach area. This was actually somewhat difficult to sew, and I feel like I messed up the front paws. More on that later. Once the belly body gusset was sewn to the right side of the body, I flipped it outside, inside out, and this is what it looked like. Half of a cat's body. And now it's time to sew the left side of the cat's body. I did it in the exact same way I sewed the right side. Once this body was basically done, I looked at it and I was like, okay, that might be good. So I flipped it inside out and the legs in the front are a little small, but overall I think it's pretty cute. I'm pinning the top part now of the body, like the back of the cat up to the neck. And I'm not gonna sew all the way across the neck cause I need to still inside it out. But this is essentially the step where you sew closed the whole cat's body. Taking those pins out and we're gonna flip this inside out. It took a little bit of time, shook it, had to like try to get those little tiny paws through and the legs are so cute. And now it's time to stuff this cat with our fluffing. I made sure to stuff this whole cat. I started with the back feet and made sure I got the stuffing in those parts first, and then I stuffed through the whole cat. The body's stuffed and it's time to create our cat tail. So I have cut these two pieces out. I just pinned them together and then sewed them as best as I could. The tail is a little small, so it's a little harder to sew with a sewing machine, and then flipping it inside out was pretty difficult. I tried to use my safety pin hack where you push it through, but even that didn't work with the stretchy fabric. I ended up using a pencil and that worked so much easier and I got it inside it out pretty quickly with that. Attaching the cat's tail was rather simple. I just used some thread and my sewing needle and sewed through using a ladder stitch. So I sewed two stitches on the bottom and then two stitches on the top and then two stitches on the bottom, two stitches on top. There was a small opening on the cat's toe. So I sewed that closed and then I moved to the neck. For the neck, I did a quick, easy stitch around the outside of the neck and then pulled it tight so that the thread would pull it and kind of make it like a drawstring bag. This makes it easier for me to attach the cat's head. My absolute favorite part of this process was sewing this little cat's head on. Look how cute its little head is. Its face is just adorable. I continued to stitch all the way around this cat's head, all the way around the back of the neck, and made sure everything was really secure and we weren't gonna have any decapitations. And here we have the final result of Baby Blue. I think he is so cute, little Baby Blue. I think as far as the sewing pattern goes, I nailed the side of the body. Like, it really looks like a cat from the side. From the front, the body gives off seal vibes. From the top, it's good. It looks like a cat. I think the front, the legs, are the thing that's throwing me. It's a little too small. You gotta kind of adjust it. But I love the bottom part. I like the rainbow. I like the rainbow inside the ears. Baby Blue has a very adorable personality. He loves to lay in his gray-blue blanket. He's quite a lazy cat at times, but other times he's a very curious kitten. He loves looking outside my front window and seeing what my neighbors are up to. 
Baby Blue also loves to rest inside the Christmas tree that I should have already taken down. And he also loves the box that I gave him. Cats love boxes, and I gotta say, Baby Blue is no different from any other cat. He loves his box. Let's move on to our next stuffed animal, which is an elephant. This time I'll be making my own elephant. As I'm sure a lot of you have probably noticed at this point, I have recently become obsessed with making my own stuffed animals from scratch by drawing my own patterns very precisely using very exact measurements. I'm kidding. I'm really just guesstimating the length that I need. I'm not really into measuring things very exactly. I'm more into doing it by eye, which does lead to some issues, as I'm sure you can guess. If you're new and don't know what a pattern is, I like to call it a road map of sorts. It's like a visual diagram with instructions, usually, of how to sew the thing you're going to be sewing. Now, my pattern doesn't actually have instructions written out because the instructions are in my head, but I do have drawings of the head, the body, the ears, the feet. All body parts are accounted for. Once I've drawn each of the body pieces for the elephant, I have to cut it out of the piece of paper. Now, since in this template or pattern, I have drawn everything on different pages, I actually cut them out and then put it into my printer's scanner and I scanned it all together so all of my pieces are on one page if I ever want to make this elephant again. I'll be keeping this in my file cabinet. My art room is clearly not done, as you can see. Now that I've drawn the basic shapes for the elephant, it's time to cut them out of the fabric. I have quite a few options of very furry, soft fabrics. I've decided to go with this gray-blue color for the majority of our elephant, and the secondary color is going to be this lighter gray color. I feel like this looks like a good elephant hide. Oh. Yeah, well, that makes it sound scary, but I think it technically is an elephant hide. I've flipped the fabric so the furry side is down, and then I'm placing my pieces that I'm going to cut out of the fabric. I took out my pins, and I'm using those to secure the template pieces to the fabric. When you're cutting this out, it actually moves around quite a bit. The fabric is really thick, and it's hard to get a precise line. Not only is this fabric very thick, it's also extremely messy. The fur, when you're cutting it, just gets everywhere. It starts like snowing fur. I still have it all over me and it's been a week. I'm also taking out my lighter gray fabric and we're gonna cut a few of the pieces out of this fabric. The back of the legs, the stomach area, and the inner ears will all be this lighter gray color. I feel like it's more fun when you have a stuffed animal that has two different colors and has a little bit of a two different textures to it. I don't know, this is only my third stuffed animal, so we'll see how it goes. Here are all of the pieces finally cut out of the fabrics and now we're ready to start sewing things together. Before we can actually start sewing with our sewing machine, we need to thread the bobbin. This is something I find hilarious. It's not actually funny to do it, but the phrase threading the bobbin, it just sounds like something totally different than what it is. Basically, a sewing machine has two areas where thread comes out of it. On the top part, you have the needle that you can actually see. And on the bottom part, you have the bobbin. The first thing I'll be sewing is my head and my head gusset. They've really got to come up with a better name for gusset. It sounds disgusting. Gusset, moist, periwinkle, all of these words need to be eliminated. The gusset is basically, I think of it like this. We have the left side of our head, we have the right side of our head, and then we have kind of like the front face of our head, also the top of our head and the back of our head. The gusset is that piece that runs from the front of your face all the way to the back of your head. Now that I've sewn the left side of the elephant's face to the gusset, I'm going to take the right side of the elephant's face and sew it to the rest of the gusset. I'm sewing from the tip of the nose all the way to the back of the head. Once we have both sides of the gusset sewn to the right and left side of the face, we can flip it and we should have the beginnings of an elephant skull. Can you, can you see it? I'm flipping it back inside out, and the last thing I have to sew is from the bottom of the nose all the way to the bottom of the neck. I am leaving a small opening in the neck area so that once it's sewed, we can still flip it inside out and see the furry part. 
Using the tiny hole I left in the elephant's neck, I insided this out, and now we're ready for some polyfill, some fluffing. We're actually fluffing the stuffing. This was something that was recommended to me by one of you guys in the comments. In my last video, I felt like I was using too much polyfill, and someone recommended to fluff the stuffing before I stuff it inside my stuffed animals. I moved the stuffing around a bit, adjusted things, and I gotta say I'm really loving how cute the little trunk is looking. Let's move on to the ears. So we have four pieces for the ears. We have the inner ear, which is this lighter gray color, and we have the outer ear, which is the blue gray color. I'm pinning the two parts of the ears together, and then I'm going to sew around this kidney bean shape. When I sewed around both of these kidney bean shapes, it was actually kind of challenging to make sure that they both looked similar, because although I cut them the same, it's hard to sew in a very small kidney circle shape. They're sisters, not twins. I also left a small opening on the ears so that I could flip them inside out. And now that we have the head and two ears, it's time to sew those ears onto the head. So I took out my sewing thread, threaded it through just a regular sewing needle, and pull. I cut a decently large amount of thread because I wanted to use this for both of the ears. And then I pretty much just stitched the ear to the head as securely as possible. I did make sure that I added those like knot stitches to the beginning and the ends. And here we have the basic structure of this elephant head, but now he needs some eyes. I have these eyes that I got from Joann's. They're brown, I think. Yes, brown eyes. Each of the eyes come with this backing thing, which I like to call a socket, an eye socket. In the past, I was pretty easily able to just poke a little hole for the eye, but with this fabric, it actually was so thick that I had to use a scissor to cut through, and then I was able to stick the eye socket on. And now it's time to start on the legs. These pieces are the lighter gray fabric, so this will be the secondary color this elephant has. When I was pinning the legs, I did take out the outer body to make sure that I was pinning the little legs in the correct spot. I'm really just making sure sure everything's gonna line up later. After I had sewed all four of the legs to the correct position in the stomach area, it looked like this. So this will become the stomach and the back of the legs on this elephant. And now it's time to take out the body. So we have two sides of the body, the right and the left, and this other lighter gray color is the gusset. I'm pinning the left side of the elephant's body to the left side of the stomach and the back left legs. They're kind of connected. This required a lot of pins because the fabric was moving around a lot. I will say that it was a little difficult sewing these two pieces together. The lighter gray fabric is very stretchy and the darker gray fabric is not stretchy at all. This difference in stretchiness did create some, I wouldn't even call it a difficulty, but it just was an extra added thing to think about. I incited this out and you can actually already see that the stretchiness difference is creating a bend in the stomach that I wasn't intending. The right side of the body is connected and now it's time to connect the left side of the body. And when I was doing this, I was very aware that the stretchiness of the light gray fabric, specifically around the stomach, was creating that bend. More on that later. But first, we're going to inside the body out one more time, get a good look at it, and we have one more area to sew the back of the elephant from the butt up to the neck. We're gonna leave a little opening at the neck so we can still flip it inside out. Once that was totally sewed closed, I removed the pins and then insided the elephant out for the last time. And once it has been insided out, we can see a very near miracle has occurred. I'm taking out my polyfill, fluffing the stuffing up, and we're stuffing this elephant, which is actually sitting upright. Was that on purpose? No. No, it was not on purpose. When I was originally trying to draw my pattern, I was racking my brain trying to figure out how can I make this elephant look like he's sitting upright? And because I've never done that before with a stuffed animal, I gave up and I was like, okay, I guess it's just not gonna happen. We're not gonna have our elephant sitting upright. But it turns out the stretching of that light gray fabric actually stretched the stomach in the right way that the elephant is sitting upright. So although this was totally done by accident and I'm sure there's a better way to do it, I respectfully request that everyone be happy for me because it's rare that things work out like this for me. 
I am kind of obsessed with the way this came out. Even if the fabric is kind of raggedy looking, I kind of like it. It's a little charming. I know that it was difficult to cut this fur in the same direction, which was a complaint last video, but I'll work on it next time. If you want to see more. All right, up next, I'm going to be creating a little bunny rabbit. I'll be sewing a bunny from scratch. <laughs> Before we can get started doing anything, I have to sketch out the rough shapes that I'm going to be cutting out of my fabric. Although it might look to you like I'm just guessing, there are actually a lot of very precise mathematical guesstimates of how things should be. I kind of know roughly how things are going to fit together, but I'm not an expert at making sewing patterns. A pattern is an instructional template that shows you exactly the shapes you have to cut out and where you have to sew things together. So my template includes all of the different body parts and shapes you need to create a bunny. At this point, I've made a few stuffed animals on my own, and I think I've learned something almost every single time I've done one of these videos. Not quite sure exactly what I learned, but I seem to be improving. Oh wait, here's one thing I learned. When you make the legs, it's best to just trace the original legs that are attached to the body because then they'll be the same shape. After I was done sketching out all the various body parts, it was time to cut them out of the paper. You'll notice that I had to draw this on two separate sheets of paper. I don't know what happened. Maybe I drew the body parts larger than before. Maybe the bunny is just composed of more parts, but I could not fit this all on one sheet. So that I can recreate this in the future if I want to, I decided to copy them all in my scanner and it had to be on two separate sheets of paper. It's so sad. And now we're taking out our fabric. As promised in my thumbnail, today's video will involve pieces of clothing like socks and hats, and we're going to be turning those into stuffed animals. I would consider this a challenge because it's a lot harder to sew a stuffed animal out of an earmuff or a hat and a sock or some scarves than it is to sew it out of a big piece of fabric. The main difficulty comes from the fact that there's way less fabric, but the secondary difficulty is that everything I bought here is actually from the Dollar Tree, so the fabric is not the best quality. I've chosen to turn the furry white scarf and the pink sock into my bunny. There were definitely some fun color combination options, but I felt like for my first bunny, pink and white is the way to go. The first thing we're dealing with is this white scarf. So it is double layered, but it has a layer of white felt underneath. So at first I decided to cut that white felt out because honestly, I hate ripping seams. However, I realized that the seams ripped so easily. Basically, I was able to break the white thread that was connecting that felt and just totally separate the furry piece from the felt piece. I'm gonna take this white felt and just put it to the side and maybe save it for a different project. For the white scarf, we have a very long but thin piece of fabric. My pins have some leftover fur from the elephant. I decided this tail gusset was useless, and then I started trying to pin all of these pieces to a very small area of fabric. Some of the body pieces only required one layer, but most of them, like the head and the ears, it requires multiple pairs of the fabric. It took me a while to properly place everything. I thought I wasn't going to have enough fabric, and this is all I was left with. Just scraps. I literally used the whole scarf. I also wanted to incorporate some of my pink fuzzy socks, so I decided to use those for the inside of the ear as well as the bottom of the foot. So I cut those last pieces out of the sock, and here we have all of the pieces that are going to make up this bunny rabbit. And I'd like everyone to note that yes, I do have a tail. Last episode, I did not put a tail on the elephant due to some complications and everyone was not happy. Because this bunny rabbit is going to be mostly white, I am threading my bobbin with white thread. Looks good to me. And then I'm just putting the bobbin underneath the sewing machine. If you don't know how a sewing machine works, there's two areas where thread come out on the top and on the bottom. And the bottom is where the bobbin is located. After all of that prep work, we're finally ready to start sewing. I'm going to be starting with the head and the head gusset. 
I like to sew from the nose to the back of the head. Sewing the left and right sides of the head to the head gusset will create the beginnings of a bunny rabbit skull. Or head. Once I've sewn the left side of the head to the gusset, I just flipped it inside out, checked it out, and started sewing the right side of the head to the gusset. Once that's done, I'm insiding it out again. It might seem dumb, but it's always a very good idea to double check that you've sewn everything correctly. Now we need to sew from the tip of the nose down to the bottom of the neck area. And I'm making sure that I leave a little piece at the neck open so I can still inside it out. That's looking good. And now we're ready to take out our polyfill stuffing, fluffing. I'm fluffing up the stuffing and then I'm stuffing the stuffing into the, in the you know what I'm doing. I'm making a snowball. When you sew furry things like this, it's inevitable that the furry pieces will get stuck in the seams. With this one, it's obvious because there's so much less fur, so I really had to make sure I took every little piece out. To free those pieces of fur that are stuck in the seam, I just used a regular sewing pin and kind of pulled at it until we had a snowball. A snowball that needs a face. I have this kit that I got on Amazon. It has a bunch of different eyes and noses and all different things. Well, mostly just eyes and noses. They come in different colors is my point. And I have chosen a pink nose for this bunny rabbit. Since the inner ear is going to be pink, I thought this would be cute. Adorable. The next thing we're sewing are the ears. So we have two ears, meaning we have two pairs of white and two pairs of pink. I'm pinning the pink to the white and then we're gonna sew around this very long oval. It was important to me that the bunny had long ears because that is always the cutest way. I incited the ears out and then I took out something that is a request. People make many requests and I don't always do all of them, but I try to sometimes. It was asked of me that if I ever make a bunny rabbit to add some type of wire to the inside of the ears so we could manipulate the ears around and make some funny expressions. I just so happened to be making a bunny when I read that comment and thought it was an amazing idea. So I bought some floral wire on Amazon, bent it into the right shape, glued it together and stuck it in the ear. To secure the floral wire inside the ear, I took out a regular sewing needle and thread, threaded the thread through the needle, tied a knot and started just sewing closed the hole. After I had fully closed the ears holes, I then sewed the ears onto the bunny's head. Both of the fabrics are so stretchy that I actually had to sew this twice. So I sewed the top part of the ear and then I flipped it up and sewed underneath as well. And now we're ready for some eyeballs. I actually decided to go with the black eyeballs. I was gonna pick a color, but I was comparing them and I liked the black ones the best. We have a bunny head, but now we need a bunny body. I'm starting off with the body gusset, but I needed to compare it to the actual body because I needed to see where I was placing those legs. If you're confused what I'm sewing right now, I'm sewing the body gusset. This is the whole stomach and the back of the legs. And now I'm going to be sewing the left and right side of the body to the stomach area. I put pins around this whole thing, but then I remembered, oh wait, I want to leave an opening on the bottom of the feet for the pink foot pads. Once I finished sewing the body to the stomach, I incited the whole thing out and you can see that there is a hole at the bottom of the foot. I can assure you that is on purpose because I wanted to be able to put the pink foot pads at the bottom of the foot. And this is my favorite part because I incited this out and we have cute little feet pads. The body is just about done. We just need to sew from the top of the neck to the bottom of the butt. I did leave a small opening at the neck so that I can inside the whole thing out and we can now stuff it with some polyfill stuffing. I stuffed the body totally with my polyfill that I had fluffed ahead of time. And now we're ready to create our tail. You notice the tail has a weird curvature, but I actually just cut it out as an oval. I realized giving it those like bumps was kind of useless, so I didn't end up doing it. Once the tail's done, it's time to assemble our bunny. This is my favorite part maybe of making stuffed animals because this is when everything comes together. Last episode, I made an elephant and I was struggling really hard with trying to figure out how to make the elephant sit. But this time I actually drew it so that it would be sitting. 
it turns out it wasn't as confusing as I had made it out to be. You literally just draw the side of the body so that it's sitting and voila, we have a sitting stuffed animal. Named Snowball. Off camera, I did add two pigtail bows to Snowball's ears. I just had to, it was too cute and I, I had to put them on. Wires in Snowball's ears, they are somewhat functional. You can bend them to be in weird shapes. I don't know how much I actually enjoy it, but it is possible. I think I just like it floppy though. As for Snowball, she enjoys long walks on the beach and carrots. We give her plenty of carrots. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much. I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.